Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace, they're yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text that we're using for our message this morning is from our gospel lesson in John 15. Under the theme, Love People, Love People. I know some of these I wonders you're familiar with, but I'd like to share them with you anyway. I wonder, I wonder why you park on a driveway and you drive on a parkway. I wonder why if a store is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I wonder why they need a lock on the front door. I wonder why when it said, here's somebody who needs no introduction, I wonder why they get one anyway. And here's one. I wonder why when I thought, boy, that would be a good place for the pastor to end his sermon, I wonder why he doesn't. There are many things that cause us to wonder why. But perhaps one of the most perplexing could be, I wonder why God loves me. Probably many of you have seen the musical Grease. A guy and a girl fall in love, Sandy and Danny. And Sandy is hurt by the one she loves. But then she sings a song entitled, hopelessly devoted to you. Danny has trampled her feelings. Danny doesn't say nice things about her. Danny ignores her when, she, when he's with his, his friends. So why is she hopelessly devoted to Danny? Perhaps we can ask the same question. Why is God hopelessly devoted to us? We trample his feelings. We take his name in vain. We get angry and upset when he doesn't answer prayers the way we think they should be answered. We act sometimes as if he doesn't exist when we're with our friends. How do we know God loves us? How can we be sure God loves us? There was a, a priest in the Middle Ages who said to his congregation, I want you to be in church next Sunday evening. I promise you I'm going to preach the most powerful sermon I have ever preached on God's love for you. The next Sunday evening, the congregation was filled. When it got dark, and when it was time for the, for the sermon, the priest had all the lights turned off. Sanctuary was dark. He lit a candle. He went to the altar area, and he held that lit candle at the feet of a crucifix of Jesus. And he let the light of that candle shine on the nails driven through Jesus' feet. He then raised the candle and let the light of that candle shine on the wound in Jesus' side. And then he moved the candle. And he let the light of that candle shine on the nails that were driven through Jesus' hands. And then he raised the candle. And he let the light of that candle illuminate the crown of thorns that pierced Jesus' head. He 
He blew out the candle and said, that's how we know Jesus loves us. Amen. When Jesus speaks the words that are in our gospel lesson today, he speaks them to the disciples in the upper room. The day before he was going to be arrested, the day before he was going to be beaten, the day before he was going to be crucified, and he also knew that soon he would be returning to the Father in heaven and the disciples would be left alone. He knew that they were going to face hardship. He knew that they were going to face persecution. He knew that their faith was going to be challenged. He knew that many of them, most of them, in fact all but one, would die. But what he wanted them to know was that no matter what the future held for them, that they were loved. As the Father has loved me, he said, so do I love you. It was always one of my goals as a pastor that when my parishioners left the sanctuary on Sunday, I wanted them to know for sure the gospel message that God loves them. You see, as a pastor, I had no idea, I had no idea what was going to confront the members of my congregation in the week to come. I didn't know if they were going to be in an automobile accident. I didn't know if they were going to have a family crisis. I didn't know if they were going to get a medical diagnosis. I didn't know if there was going to be a business reversal. But I wanted them to know that no matter what the future held, no matter what was going to occur in the week to come, that God loves them very much. I don't think it's by accident that every one of our worship services culminate with receiving our Lord's body and blood, bread and wine. Because as you receive the bread and as you receive the wine, the body and blood of Christ, God is saying to you, I love you. I love you. I died for you. I shed my blood. I gave my body because of my great love for you. And he is saying that to you very individually and very personally. One of the reasons that advertisers show their commercials over and over and over again on television is because they want to make sure we get the message. Sometimes we as human beings need to be hit over the head with a two by four. Sometimes we miss what God is saying to us. And Jesus wanted to make sure that his disciples understood what he was saying to them. So Jesus says to his disciples not only that he loves them, but he went two steps further to reinforce that message. He didn't want them to misunderstand. He didn't want them to miss it. And he says to them, you are also my friends. Greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life, their friends. Not only does he tell them that they are loved, but they, he says that you are my friends. And then he goes a step further and he says, you are also chosen. You didn't choose me, but I chose you. You are so special to me. You are so important to me. I chose you. Folks, it doesn't get any better than that. To 
know that we are loved and that God thinks of us as his friends and that he has chosen us. He reminds his disciples and he reminds us that their relationship with him is because of his initiative, not ours. It is ultimately the result of his grace and his love for us. It is here we might be tempted to say, that's a good place, Pastor, to stop. <laughs> I would, but Jesus says something else and says more. If we had to stop here and I ask you to fill in the blank, God is blank. God is love. I know I'm dating myself now, but there's an old song by Ian Warwick that said, and that says, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. I know she wasn't thinking of this, but if we say God is love, what the world needs now is God. It's God's love. And there's only one way that that's going to happen. That if we, as loved people, love people. We as loved people, we as people, God has called us friends, we as people who have been chosen, the result of that is that we are to love people. Something to reflect on. Somebody has said that there are perhaps two kinds of Christians, stagnant pond Christians or flowing water Christians. A stagnant pond often receives its water as a result of rainfall. And that water just sits there and it begins to smell begins to turn green and it stagnates. It's of no use to anyone. A flowing water, on the other hand, is water that refreshes, is water that brings life is life-giving, is giving. What kind of Christians are we? Christians that just receive God's love and it just sits there? Or are we Christians that receive God's love and it flows out of us? Do you remember the account of Moses in the Old Testament when he came down from Mount Sinai people could see God's glory in his face. They could tell that he had been with God. You know, if we don't wear a hat or if we don't wear sunscreen, people can look at our face and can see that we have been sunburned and they can tell that we've been out of the sun. I ask can people tell that we have been filled with the love of God? Can people look at us and know that we too have been with the Son? Is the love of God flowing out of us? Does it show up in our faces and in the lives we live? I share with you an encounter that I'll never forget, and one that has always troubled me. I enjoy playing golf. In the church that I served up in Albany, New York for almost 30 years, one day I joined a threesome on the first tee. 
I introduced myself and I told them that I was a pastor. I always found that was a good thing to do at the beginning of the round. <laughs> and one of the men said to me that, as he introduced himself, he said that he worked for a certain department in the state. And I said to him, oh, do you know so-and-so? He works for that department and he's a member of my church. And his response was this. He says, yes, I know him well. But I never would have known he went to church. It's my prayer this morning that you will know without a doubt that God is hopelessly devoted to you. It's my prayer that you will know without a doubt that you are loved people, that you are chosen, that you are friends of the Savior of the world, and that because we are loved people, we will love people. We don't want to be stagnant ponds, but we want to have God's love flowing out of us. We want people to know that we have been with the Son by the words we speak and by the lives we live. Because it's our mission that all people will know the love of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are loved. Help us to love. And help us, Lord, to realize that as we give your love away, that love in our lives is not diminished, but that love in our lives is also increased and multiplied. And what a joy it is to give your love and to share your love with others so that they too have it and that they can share it and give it to others as well. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.